Hello and welcome to the Spectrum Show, the show dedicated to the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Coming up in this episode, we go back to October 1983 and take a look at all the Sinclair news and latest Spectrum games. We go large with the ultimate gaming experience. We take a look at some early Imagine games and review some newer titles. But first, it's back into the time machine in October 1983. Melbourne House announced their new game designer package two weeks after Quicksilver's release. The package, called Herg, claims to allow you to create your own games within hours, and games written by the package can be entered into a competition and win the programme at £3,000. It's the run-up to Christmas and Quicksilver announced their titles they hope to be hits this year. Four games will be released for the Spectrum, those being 3D Ant Attack, The Flea, Grid Runner and Trax. There will be stiff competition though as all software houses will be gunning for that number one spot at Christmas. Sinclair finally unveiled their ROM interface, thoughtfully named Interface 2. The unit, available only by mail order, will be priced around 1995, and the ROM cartridges, of which initially there will be 10, cost around 14.95 each. Melbourne House are to follow up their massive hit The Hobbit with another text and graphic game. This time the hero will be in the form of Sherlock Holmes, and the player has to help him find the murderer. The game is based on the works of Arthur Conan Doyle, and is set to be released in 1984. The storage device for the Spectrum is in short supply, announced Sinclair. The microdrive, according to the company, is still in early production, and they refuse to say how many units have actually been shipped. To add to the problem, Scion, who are reportedly producing software for the unit, claim they are being held back due to lack of cartridges. The required thousands of blanks are simply not available as yet, so any dedicated software will have to wait. And now onto the top selling games. Jetpack, The Hobbit, Scrabble, Trans Am and the Horace games are still hogging the top spots, leaving little room for newcomers. There are in fact just two. 3D Desert Patrol from CRL, a kind of battle zone clone with a few additional extras. And Ultimate's third game, Cookie, where you help a chef bake cakes and avoid nastiness. And that was October 1983. Many of us senior Spectrum users still remember the days huddled in front of our 14 inch portable televisions with our eyes just a few inches from the screen, eagerly playing our favourite games. Recently though I thought I would try taking my gaming to the other extreme. My first task was hardware. Having ruled out the real thing due to loading times and the fragility of the things, I went in search of something else. It had to be small but give me everything I needed including a HDMI port. There are some really nice small machines out there for a few hundred pounds and I could build them into anything that I needed but sadly a few hundred pounds wasn't on the agenda. It was then that my eyes fell on my old laptop sat beside my monitor having hardly been used. A quick inspection showed me it had a HDMI port and that was the start. Next I needed an emulator, and a front end. The emulator had to work well in full screen, and eventually I settled on spin. So now onto the front end. I'd looked at several of these, and after a bit of testing went for one called Marla. It looked easy to set up, ran on old hardware and could be easily customised. Initially Marla sports MAME, but you can use it with any emulator. You just need to go into the settings, choose the executable, and add any extras that you need. There are hundreds of different settings here. You probably don't need all of them just to run a Spectrum emulator, but it's nice to know they're there. The first thing to do was to set up folders. I needed two, one for the games themselves and another for screenshots. My plan was to have a list of games on the front end that showed screenshots as you selected them. Other options in Marla allow you to set up key controls or joystick controls and many, many more things. And more importantly, you can select which theme you want. I'll move on to themes later on. Having set all these up and spent ages grabbing screenshots from all my selected games, it was on to the customization of the front end. Marla comes with a great utility that allows you to build any front end you like. All you need is some decent graphics, and you can get them from the internet. Using this utility I imported a nice background that I'd created. I added a game list and selected the options for the font size and spacing. Added a screenshot view and left in a few extras like game counts. All of these things are standard in Marla, but can be customised if you need to dig a bit deeper. After a bit of tweaking I finally got it looking exactly how I wanted. 
and this is where it really pays to do the final bits on the television you're going to use. Once everything was ready, my laptop was taken downstairs, plugged into the TV, and everything was switched on. From 14 inch to 42 inch, this was the perfect Spectrum gaming experience. To finish things off if I wanted to, I could buy a small wireless keyboard, hide the laptop and pretend to be a kid again. Brilliant. If you're looking for a front end to run on large screen TVs, then Marla is a good choice. It's comprehensive, easy to use and easy to configure. And if you do it right, it looks really good. Molar Mall, released in 1983, is a unique little game that involves dental hygiene and a lot of toothpaste. The instructions to the game mention the bacteria and call it the DK Menace. Some people surmise this to be a direct dig at DKtronics, Imagine's rival software house at the time. The game involves protecting a mouthful of teeth by constant brushing. You have to collect toothpaste first though, and then visit the tooth and give it a good clean. The bacteria move around attacking the teeth, turning them slowly from a healthy white to a decidedly unhealthy black. Different sweets, represented by an image bottom right, introduces more bacteria, causing a frenzy of brushing. The level ends when you've used up all of the toothpaste, represented by an image at the top right. The game has similar mechanics to Ultimate's Psst, and despite playing in silence proves quite tricky. The downside is the control and positioning of the toothbrush. It can be difficult to pick up the toothpaste and also get the toothbrush in line with the tooth. Easier control and more sound would have improved this game a lot, and as it is it just manages to fall into the mediocre category, but still worth a look. Next we have Zoom, again released in 1983. When this game came out I spent hours playing this and managed some really good high scores, beating many of the people who wrote into magazines bragging about their efforts. The game has you flying a new plane in an attempt to protect refugees from a variety of enemy threats. The first level has planes, swooping down and dropping bombs on the little men walking about at the bottom of the screen. They seem totally unaware of the danger they're in, often stopping and waving at you. You have a machine gun and missiles, and these can be used to take out the enemy. Which you use depends on the level, and as different enemy aircraft appear you sometimes have to mix and match. The main game window provides a nice 3D view of the terrain, showing your crosshair and whichever scenery connected to the level you're on. There are other indicators on screen as well, displaying score, status, shield and height above ground. If you fly too low you will crash and lose a life, as will taking too many enemy hits. As the levels change so does the scenery, moving from green fields to desert and onto oceans. The enemy craft also changes, from planes to tanks and onto boats, and later levels you get a mixture, which is when things get really hectic. The graphics are colourful and smooth, but the little men are displayed in bright. This means they have an attribute box around them, and there's no real need for this. If they get hit by the enemy, they fly up into the air in a comical manner, and I spent many a time just shooting them and having a good old laugh. This doesn't help your high score though. Overall this is a good release from Imagine, offering a nice challenge and varying graphics to keep the player interested. I still like this game, and it's one that I often go back to when I need some brainless shooting. Definitely recommend it. This is Sid Spanners, released by Digital Prawn in 2010. This is quite obviously a platform game, harking back to the old school and getting much of its ideas from classics such as Manic Miner. The graphics are very basic, with the nasties only having two stage animation, but that shouldn't detract from this game. This game's strength lies in, like every other great platform game, 
working out exactly where to go without being killed. The idea is that Sid has to move around the levels collecting all the nuts. These items are placed strategically around the screen so that you have to work out how to get them without being killed. This isn't a frantic chasing dodging game, it's more of a thought game, you have to work out the best route to get something and some of the screen designs are quite clever. The sound is very minimal, only playing when you collect a nut or die. The controls are smooth and responsive, and if you like this type of game, and don't mind the basic graphics, I think you'll find you'll like this. The game contains only 8 screens because it was the first in a series, with the other games being called Sid Spanners 2 The Slackening, Sid Spanners 3 The Nut House, and Sid Spanners 4 Time Loop. Each of these games expands on the first, giving you more gameplay and more screens to explore. This is a nice little game to play, and is quite addictive in the same way that Manic Miner and all its predecessors are. Why not download it free of charge and give it a try? That's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to help making the next one, get in touch via the details below. See you soon.